We're ascending here the KK-34 tower. As you can see, uh, we're in the middle of the uh, forest. And the scientific question we were originally interested in when we put together an experiment here in 2008 was what's the connection between the emissions from the forest and the uh, connections of those particles to rainfall. And what we uh, discovered is that those emissions from the forest are really controlling the uh, atmospheric particle size distribution and ultimately rainfall and climate. And that's motivated our return in the Go Amazon 2014 campaign. Well, now we're asking, well, okay, if those emissions from the forest are controlling those aspects of climate, what does it mean when they couple to uh, pollution? Manaus is a free trade zone where all the electronics for Brazil are manufactured that sits in the middle of the Amazon uh, rainforest and 2,000 kilometers every direction. There are no other major industrial uh, activities. When we get pollution, we know where it's coming from. It's coming from Manaus and therefore provides this natural laboratory for our Go Amazon experiment. I'll be responsible for one very important instrument, which is a mass spectrometer. And from that, we will get information on the chemical composition of the aerosols and looking at how these atmospheric particles are formed, how they interact with the pollution coming from Manaus, and how that affects climate. So in uh, Go Amazon, we set up a series of four sites. We're at the final site, T3. And the idea behind that is an air parcel, something like a hot air balloon, starts to the east of Manaus and travels with the wind to where we are now. And so the idea of these four sites, one upwind of Manaus, makes a measurement of the air parcel when it's clean, one in Manaus gets the emissions, one just across the river from Manaus gets the fresh pollution, and now we're approximately four hours downwind of Manaus, we get the aged uh, pollution. So watch the aging and chemistry in an air parcel. But scientifically, most of the measurements have been done in the USA, Europe, Japan region. But actually, if you think about climate, most of the jewels and water flows happen in the region of the equator. If we do our job well, then that can inform decisions about how to continue economic development in those regions. We can provide a knowledge base that says, you know, listen, okay, if you are going to develop, um, if you think about these transportation systems or these energy systems, they could have a reduced effect on climate change, trying to provide that kind of knowledge base.